Welcome to Session Spotlight, Representative Di. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, so tell us, how is session going so far? Well, thanks for having me, Stephanie. And we just finished the um, House of Origin policy cutoff yesterday evening. And so it's been just a, a sprint. You know, long session is supposed to be a marathon, but it was a complete sprint for the first five weeks. Yeah, I I was watching last night and just thinking, when is this going to end? They just want to get through what they need to get through, and and so I'm not I have I'm not really up to date on what has gotten through and what what they're going to leave behind. So, I guess what my first question to you would be is, what is um, what are the what are the things that you think our chamber members would most want to know about what's happening in session? Well, in terms of what gets through and what doesn't get through, don't be surprised, Stephanie, because we still have the fiscal committees that the House of Origin policy cutoff is on Friday at five. So anything that does not get funded then is dead. There's so many ways to kill a bill, right? And, and so I know that your members are very curious to know about all the many broadband bills that are running through the session right now. And there's been a lot of proposals on the table and very significant policy and a lot of money going that direction after we had had a year on Zoom. I, I can't believe people are so excited about being on Zoom again. But anyway, um, we have we have a lot of bills and there's a couple of bills that I would draw your attention to. Um, the first one is um, 1336 and it provides um, it provides retail authority for municipalities and public utilities and ports. And, you know, it, it's been a, a proposal that has been on the table for a number of years. Ever since I've been here, the public utilities have been wanting retail authority. But it really isn't because they want so much to become a, a, a telephone company, but more that they want access to some of the funding pro, uh, pools that are available through the federal government. And I really don't think that using, you know, it's kind of like using a sledgehammer to kill a fly. And, and and it has a lot of unintended consequences. If you look at the literature, you'll see that municipal telecom has largely failed. And there's a reason for that. And that's because you can't compete with the innovation and the technology that continues to improve in the telecommunications um, in that realm. Uh, the, the, uh, the most important thing to note is that this is a component system, right? So you have the road and that would be the broadband fiber. And that'd be just like any other road or highway that we drive to work on, only we just drive our data on that road. And so in my opinion, that road is completely appropriate to be constructed in the public sector. But then you have the companies that like to drive on that road and they may want to drive a Datsun or they may want to drive a Lexus, you don't know. But you know which one's more expensive, right? And if you want the next thing, the Tesla, you want to have that in the private sector sector, right? Because you want to have the innovation in the electronics that lights the fiber that makes it faster, better, more responsive, less latency. And you know what latency feels like because you tried to do this film about a, an hour ago in my home and and there's a, a it's called ping, but there's 1200 ping on my home satellite dish and it just isn't good enough to do the technology that we have. These programs are very heavy to carry in data. So, you know, you need a, 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 very, a very responsive electronic system. My concern about municipal uh, broadband is that those electronics are going to be very expensive and the public sector is going to be very reticent to upgrade those. So again, rural communities will have less than current, less than adequate, uh, services that they need just because the public sector can't carry the lift, whereas the private sector will be very competitive in providing low cost, very efficient internet services to our homes. The other one that I'm very interested in is 5175 that has now in Ways and Means. A, a similar bill is run by Honeyford 
And let me see, it is um, 53.57. And both of those fund the Community Economics Revitalization Board and the um, Public Works Trust Fund, the Public Works Board. And both of those programs have already been passed into legislation. It offers $200 million in funding for broadband services. So you're saying the governor already signed them? Nope, they're both in Ways and Means, and we will see which one prevails at fiscal cutoff on Friday with the Senate. They'll both be coming House of Origin from the Senate, and then they have to go through committee in the House. Gotcha. Uh, so some of those expedited bills uh, are from the recovery package. Um, did you support that at all? Um, you know, that was basically um, bringing federal money into the system and the broadband office will be very well able to handle that through Department of Commerce. I assume it was in the commerce line items. So that money will be um, going out to provide services. Some of those things that, um, for example, giving devices to students and instructional staff, the CARES money really met that need in a lot of communities. So, you know, in orders of efficiency, I would say it's more important to think about the guy at the end of the gravel road. Some people call my home the uh, just a little bit beyond the last mile, and I'm feeling that this morning. <laughs> I would have to agree with you there. <laughs> uh, so as, as far as um, broadband goes, you feel like this bill, uh, 1336, would encompass the needs of our businesses in the Tri-Cities? No, I totally am opposed to that bill. I think that your businesses would be extremely frustrated and disappointed. Also, the Tri-Cities is a big enough entity that I would strongly encourage any of those neighborhoods and communities that lack adequate um, infrastructure to have your community form a BAT team and work with the Community Economics Revitalization Board or the Broadband Office, either one, to try and develop a plan going forward to meet the needs of those communities that have inadequate infrastructure. Because really your port has got a lot of strength. I love what they're doing. I think that you have a great uh, team there. And I think that you could probably have success in getting your infrastructure really much more robust with the funding streams that are coming in and what the BAT team broadband access team will do will help you refine your ask and decide which pools of funding you would be most appropriate for your community. Thank you. Thanks for answering that because I wasn't uh, not quite sure what direction to head there, but I appreciate your, your, your take on that. Uh, as far as the budget is concerned, that's my next big, uh, the next big item that, that is coming up. I, I know that the revenue forecast, the next one is I believe March 17th, um, I know the Republicans have already come out with, with their budget, and we all know the governor's come out with his. Haven't heard from the Democrats yet, but we know something's coming. Um, as far as your, what is your take on the budget? Well, you know, again, the way we set it up with the emergency funding bill that we ran early in the session was to utilize all of the federal funds and not touch the, um, the rainy day fund. And the reasoning for that is because creative legislators always have bills that cost money. And so they left resources there to build new things. And in reality, we have had a fairly robust recovery in this state, just the way our tax system is set up with the changes that we made for McClary and some of the other things. The Republicans wanted to show that you can literally do a budget without raising taxes and maintain services by, by finding efficiencies. So if some of the agencies, just zero-based budgeting on those agencies and finding the things that are in law, in statute, but aren't being used, not being funded or have been funded and haven't been used, ha brought some significant savings and also just um, some opportunities to fill in gaps, uh, experiences that we experienced through COVID that affected our school systems, um, the, you know, the lack of, of uh, a lot of students aren't returning right now. And so, you know, that impacts their funding. And we were still able to backfill that hole and be able to continue without having to ask for new taxes. But it's just 
what you, what you put your priorities on and how you administer the, the, the system. And we, we just don't think that right now is the time to do some radical changes in our energy economy, which would slow the growth of the economy. So we're, you know, we're, that's where I'm working from. And just, I think that it was important that the House Republicans announce their own budget. It's very unusual for the House Republicans to do that, but we felt it was important enough to show that this can be done without new taxes when, since so many of the tax bills will be coming over from the Senate. Thank you so much for your time, Representative Dye. We sure appreciate all the work you're doing in Olympia for business. Uh, is there any anything you'd you'd like to say as last thoughts to to our business uh, community? I just am so glad to hear the news that you've made it to phase two, albeit belated, and that you know I hope that we will all move to phase three quickly. Let me know if any of the if you're having any trouble with um, the the programs that you're experiencing through the state government. Um, we appreciate your letters. Please reach out to both sides of the aisle with your concerns so that everybody's well aware of the difficulties you're experiencing. And that will help all of us be able to develop good policy. Thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, you know, I do, I do have more questions, especially you mentioned phase three and I don't even know what that means. What, Actually, what there is a phrase. It's an imaginary thing that I just invented on this <laughs> because we haven't, I mean, none of us have heard what, what the plan going forward is beyond phase two. And I really hope that we will know soon um, what the plan is. I really do. I think we will. I mean, they can't they can't announce that we're in phase two for all of the regions without having a plan for phase three. So I think I think they're laying the tracks down uh, <laughs> as they go. And we will probably hear something within the next couple of days, what phase three is going to look like for us. But thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it and um, look forward to having you again on Session Spotlight. Thank you for inviting me. I so appreciate you, Stephanie. Have a good day. You too.